is William Muir? What book is it? Where it was? And I found it on, in this book on page 38. It was the only place that he spoke about the Quran. Now, William Muir spoke about how the Quran was compiled. And he said, uh, eventually, uh, Uthman got the Quran and he committed all the other copies of the Quran into the flames. Uh, sir, it is Christian. It's a British person. We can say he's just a criticizer. But what I'm worried about is... This is the words. It is possible that some of the earlier and more effemental fragments was not put into the Quran. This is what William Muir says. I just want to know, that is the quote that was made by Ahmadidat. This is the words that uh, uh, William Muir is saying. I don't see the same words there. Maybe I read, 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 read the wrong book. If it's a read, wrong book, just tell me which one it is. The next one is the Christians. The attack begins again. The Christians removed books from the Bible. Now they're talking about the Apocrypha. Ladies and gentlemen, the Apocrypha was never accepted as inspired books in the Old Testament by the Jews, by Israel of old. These were historical books, and when the Septuagint was made, they placed these books in there. When the King James was translated, it was also there. Those books are not the words of God. If the Islamic scholar wants this to be the word of God, please put it in the Quran. We Christians don't want it in the Bible. The Catholics would also state that. I just want to tell you a bit more. I've got the book here. You can buy it. It's um, the, 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 the books of the lost, uh, the lost books of Eden. And it's the lost books of the Bible. New Testamental books and Old Testamental books. These are all Gnostic books. Now, there was a religion that uh, did not believe in Jesus being a divine presence. They said he was a total man. I just want to show you all these other books that uh, the Muslim scholar must refer to if they want to say that all these historical books must be there. It's just lists and lists. I just want to ask you, do you think Adam and Eve had a book? Don't worry. Uh, the 12 tribes. Now, you will have the Gnostic books, written 120 AD. You will have the Mandean books, 350 AD. And you have the Manchian books, which will be 250 AD. Now, these books came long after the New Testament was finalized in the form that we have it today. The New Testament was finalized according to me 70 AD. We know 1313, 1325 uh, AD. That is how the New Testament looked. It's the one that we have today. Now, why does the Muslim scholar want these books? Simple, because that's the only books that speaks of Jesus that can speak while he was a baby in the crib. Or when he clapped his hands, the clay doves flew away. Those books was never in the Bible. It never described Jesus. It cannot be in the New Testament. <clears throat> the other attack that's been made, I just, I'm going to show you here tonight how unfair the Islamic scholar treats the Bible. They like to use the Catholic Church, the Seventh-day Adventists, the Java Witnesses, and all these other Christian sects, and then they say, these guys are wrong. They're telling us, you, you know, you see what they do there. So the Bible is wrong. You can't do that, ladies and gentlemen. Now I'm going to show you the same test against the Quran. As an example, the Christian admits there's 50,000 errors in the Bible. Everybody heard this 50,000 errors in the Bible. The Christians say that. Ladies and gentlemen, this was made by the Jehovah Witnesses. Jehovah Witnesses made their own Bible. They call it the New World Translation. They made 50,000 changes in it. Now they go back and they tell me that the Bible has got 50,000 errors. I mean, that's unfair. And if the Islamic scholar wants to use this, next time I'm going to refer back to this. There's also Islamic sects. There's also parts of Islam that also does things that's not into uh, the broad stream of Muslim. They have their own Quran. They wrote their own one, the Circle 7 Quran. This is how the first page looks. It's been written by the noble prophet Dru Ali, the Circle 7 Quran. Read at the bottom, uh, God Allah and his father God Allah. Now they have a prophet and they have another Quran. Now this Quran, your Quran, has 70,000 words in it. This one doesn't correspond at all. Can I now take this Quran and say that your Quran has got 70,000 errors? Why do you do that against the Bible? I can't believe it doesn't make sense, ladies and gentlemen. But there's some more sects. I'm just showing you. The Alawis, they believe Ali was at uh, Godhood. And they also believe in Easter and Chris Christmas. The Sufri, they believe Surah 12 mustn't be in the Quran. Rashid Khalifa, 
He believed he was a prophet. He rejected two verses in the Quran. He doesn't believe in the uh, the sayings, uh, the, 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 the sunnah, the way that you pray. The Yazidis, they refer to God as Satan, Satan, Satan. These guys, I can now, if I want to be a real idiot, ladies and gentlemen, I'll say Muslims believe in Satan. But I'm not an idiot. Why does the Muslims call it do that to them, to my Bible? Okay. They also have two other gods. It's just interesting. Clarence 13, he said, I am God. And for all our black people here, very good news from this Muslim uh, sect. They say, God is black. Then we can see the other attack that's been made against, against the Bible is that they say the Bible have grave and serious defects. And you guys are always translating and giving new versions. And it's a re and a re and a re version. We need to stop with this. Until I show them, the ladies and gentlemen, this thing just get there. Watch this. I don't know if you can read it, but it says a revision and a revision of the English translation. Oh, now the Islamic scholars say, but you can't do that. But let's see. What is in the Sahih International? I've got it here. The preface of the Sahih International English, English translation. I can't read Arabic, so obviously I've got to look at the preface here. They say, they can only translate the Quran into English as far as human, what is it, uh, ability permits. It's an improvement over the previous translations. Hey, but you can't do that to the Bible, eh? Okay, look at this one. The translators emphasize some aspects more than others, especially with using the Hadith. So the Quran in Arabic, you need the Hadith to tell me that the Quran in Arabic must be interpreted properly and translated properly. Look at this one. Translating Quran in another language surpasses human endeavor. By people, I'm going to tell you, translating the Bible into Afrikaans or English from Hebrew and Greek is much more difficult than translating from Arab into English. I'll tell you why. Because you can't do it because you don't want it to be translated properly. You don't want me to see exactly what's going on in the Quran then. Otherwise you must tell me why do you revise it. I can also be an idiot if I want to. I am not an idiot. I believe that I can translate the Bible four or five times and improve on it. You can do the same with the Quran. The names of Allah cannot be translated. Given. I don't have a problem with that. But now this fact is, they say that the Quran was unchanged in its Arabic form for 1,400 years. I'm telling you now, for 1,600 years, 1,800 years, and 2,000 years, the Old Testament and the New Testament was not changed in its Arabic or Greek form. I've got the manuscripts at that age. Just look at this. Even after the Quran was written, the Arabic language had to be changed in its writing. You know, the commas, the dots, the vowels, and all these things had to be placed into the Quran to understand it better. Now, if I want to be really nasty, I can say that they changed the master tablets in, 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 in heaven. I don't know. Uh, the use of tenses in translating. This is a beautiful one, ladies and gentlemen. Has anybody got a King James Version here? I don't have one here. Or can anybody just tell me, so can you just open for me Mark uh, 16 verse 17. It will say there, and for those of you that believe or shall believe, these signs will follow. You will drink poison, snakes can bite you, you will talk in languages and so on. Is that true? Thank you sir. Now, this is the Christian test. And when I saw the CD from Zakir Naik attacking um, uh, the, the Dr. Campbell, I saw something was wrong because my Afrikaans translation, and I've got it here, was translated correctly in tenses. It says, in verdi van jylle wat gegloe het. In other words, in English. And for those of you that believed. So in other words, when Mary came running in there by the apostles, they were sitting, she says, Jesus has risen, he's alive. Some of them didn't believe it, others believed. And Jesus came right there and says, those of you that believed. These signs will follow, you will have these gifts. Now, you will not allow me to say the Bible can have a problem. Oh yes, by the way, that is the Greek Aorus test. You can go and check it with the Strong's Concordance. I don't have the number here, but it's on that CD. So I'm not telling you the truth here. You can take my Afrikaans Bible and see it was translated properly. But why do you allow the Quran to have problems with tenses, but you don't want to allow that on the Bible? 
again, that contradiction of the Christian test can never be used again. I hope the Islamic scholar learned from this lesson there. I'm not going to carry on. There's a Sahih Arabic and English translation, what the people have said there, and, and so on. I think what we've done is we understand that I am allowed to revise the Bible, to translate again in English over and over. It's not a problem. Then another accusation has been made, and I could not believe this when I saw that. When I read this, we can't say that, that Moses wrote the Torah, because how could he have written his own obituary? The guy was dead. How could he have done that? You know, if you just read a bit further in the Bible, you'll see that Moses had judges and scribes and everything. Here's a few verses to tell you. Moses chose able men to rule over a thousand, a hundred and fifty and ten. You want to tell me? And remember now, the Torah and the Old Testament was the property of Israel. It wasn't the property. There was no, first of all, there was no, um, what do you call it, laws uh, for copyright. There was no copyright laws in that time. This is the property of the scribes and of the priests in Israel. If they want to add things at the bottom to describe how Moses died, what's wrong with it? Place yourself in that era and you'll see there's no contradiction here. Again, they do the same with the New Testament. They ask me, who wrote this? I'm telling you now, New Testament was written before 70 AD. And then, Time Magazine. I want to show you a character witness. What the Islamic scholar does is he's grasping all these nice things about Islam that he can get in the Western world. Look at this. Time Magazine 1974 states that Muhammad was the greatest leader of all. Now, I've seen Muslims telling me, Times Magazine said so. Ladies and gentlemen, Time Magazine never said that. And another thing is, Ahmadirat never said that. He said, the Time Magazine chose 23 academics and he asked them, please tell me, who is your best leader of all times? And the guy that did this, his name is Jules Masserman, a psychoanalogist in America, a very, very well-known person. This is the thing that he wrote. He said, perhaps the greatest leader of all times was Muhammad, who combined all three functions. Beautiful. Just one problem. If you can see Jules Masserman today, and by the way, he wasn't a Jew, as Ahmed did said, he was an atheist. He didn't believe in a God at all, eh? All right. And Jules Masserman, unfortunately, had 12 cases of rape against him. Four of those cases were settled out of court. A lady with the name Barbara Knoll wrote her book, and there's a television series I think you've already seen on TV, this, uh, uh, how the psychologist was actually trying to get out of this uh, situation. There it is. I just ask, if you, if you call a character witness for your prophet, why do you use an atheist? Why do you use a rapist? All right. I'm just glad this guy didn't say it was Jesus. Now, the Bible also, the Islamic scholar will show you here, the ultimate criterion of a true prophet is the moral correct character, the moral character. I've got a moral character, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not a prophet. This is not the test. The Bible says, if you want to be a prophet, you must be able, if you want to see somebody as a prophet, you must be able to tell the people what's going to happen in future. And if it doesn't happen, he's a false prophet, you must actually kill him. Because God says, I will do nothing if I did not tell this to my people. We'll come to that verse as I'll show you. Then Ahmadi don't ask, and I think it's a good question. I'm so glad that I saw this. The Bible can prophesy about everything, but it doesn't know about Islam. 1.2 billion Muslims in the world. It doesn't know about this religion at all. The Bible does not know. I know what the Bible says and talks about Islam. There's five places in the Bible which speaks about Islam. I'm going to show you tonight. I'm going to show you one. The other four is on that CD that I'm going to give you tonight. All right. And it's a good question. It's a, the other thing that the Islamic scholar does, and that is wonderful. This makes me learn the Bible and showing me that the Bible has got power that no, no other book in the world has. They have written 619 recorded contradictions in the Bible. Ladies and gentlemen, it's already 130. Now, I've, you know, they're getting such a lot of contradictions. I'm only sitting here with the 120 that I've solved so far. I want to get a, 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 I am going to write a dictionary where all the contradictions given by the Islamic scholar against the Bible, and you can go and read it and you can get the answers. And I hope I can do that next year. 
I'll just uh, look at my score chart. The moon, we know, reflects scientific descriptions. It's there. The first person singular, we know. The Bible should only have the Torah. I think the Bible is correct. That way, Christians and Protestants remove books. I say the Bible is okay. 50,000 errors, you can never use that again. So the Bible is right. Revisions, you can never use that again. Authors of the Bibles of the book, you can't use that. And a Time magazine. Now, if we look at... The other statement of the Islamic scholar is that they tell me, now you know, I study religions because it's my hobby, it's my passion, I love this. I don't even want to go to university and learn what they're going to learn. I think they're going to really teach me the wrong things. I do it because I love it. I read the Quran because I love it. I read the Hadith because I love it. I read history because that's my hobby. I want to show you, the Quran remained unaltered for 1,400 years. I'm just going to ask this, uh, uh, this questions later on. And Ahmadidat also says, it was perfectly preserved. I agree. And then he talks about this divine interlinking system that can show you that the Quran is exactly the word of God. What they say is, if you take the Quran and you add all the words, all the verses, all the uh, uh, surahs, all the vowels and whatever, you, can, you will be able to divide everything into 19. Now that is a miracle. But I just want to tell you, Panin did that in 1896 with the Bible. Every word, every vowel, every sentence, every chapter is divisionable by seven. So that tells, I can't use that to say my Bible is holy, it's the word of God. Let's look at the mathematical system. This is an organization, again, a sect, I agree, but listen to what they say. Submission.org is a website, you can go there and see what they say. It says, this mathematical system is the correction tool to fix the many errors that you will find in the Quran. It exposes human errors. This was best shown by exposing the two false verses in the Quran, that they were human editions. What this gentleman did is he took the Hafs edition 1918 and he took the Gold Quran. And he even gives you pictures and he says the gold Quran written a thousand years ago and the Quran that you have today in your possession. I can't read the Arabic so I can't tell you what the mistakes are there. But he says there's the errors that you must fix. There's the errors you must fix. He went to the Tuscan Quran and he says there's the errors that must be fixed. Again. But what is interesting when he went to the Tuscan Quran and this is why I made this note. He says that word Hua in the Tuscan should actually be the word Allah. So in the Tuscan Quran already there was this problem with a third person as we referred to previously. Now look what he says. Muslim scholars claim that the copy of the Quran anywhere in the world are the same. They are only exposing their ignorance and mislead millions of Muslims in their wrong teachings. You better sort that guy out. He helped me a lot. Eh? It says here, it doesn't give any credit to the truthfulness. <laughs> it doesn't give any credit to the truthfulness of the scribes of the Quran. He gives us examples here of how Ali said that he knew, it was one of the companions of, the, of Muhammad, he knew something was added to the Quran. Now what he's also doing is he showed me, I'm not, I don't want you to read that part, Muslims are the part of the Quran, the Quran for 1,400 years. I want you to read point one, two, three, and 4 and 5. Sorry, Yusuf, man. <laughs> um, you'll see, I just want to give you this history. I've got the book of Eusebius here with me. It describes the Christian uh, era after Christ right up to uh, 323 with the Council of Nicaea. It states that the Christians were killed by their millions. They reckon 20 million, but I know people always uh, make things more. Christians were killed for the religion. Their holy books was burnt by the enemy, by the Roman Empire, by the emperors that wanted the Christians to pray for him and not for Jesus and the Father and the Holy Ghost. So in this sense, coming back, looking at what happened with the Muslims, these people, it says Uthman was assassinated. 50 year, up, uh, year war erupted. I'm going to not go in there, but what I can see is Muslims started killing Muslims and burning their own Qurans. Why? Nobody can answer me on that one. 
He's also giving us examples of additions in the different uh, various copies of the Quran, Masuds and Utman. I don't know if it's true, I didn't read those Qurans, I can't get it and I don't understand Arabic. But just to show you these points, something good. And then I want to come to this part, ladies and gentlemen. I've got the copies here, I'll give it to you, Yusuf. Look at the whole textual manuscripts of the Quran. You'll find three major original scripts let's say original very light very dated very light we and i understand that these uh, uh, manuscripts of the quran was written some people say 200 you see I've, I've, I've lost my track now yeah. um, it will be the tuscan quran and it will be the top cast top copy manuscript and then there's a third one the sana now the sana understand is the oldest manuscript of the bible in existence 1972 they discovered this in yemen um, there was about 50 bags of paper that they wanted to throw away potato bags and they, they uh, one uh, scientist i think it was a german person saw that these manuscripts are very old and he took five of them and he studied it and they found out that this was maybe one of the oldest manuscripts of the quran now you'll see uh, when you go into websites and I've got the websites names everything there for you you can even get pictures of these Sana manuscripts just uh, leave that this is one picture of it there's the code number and everything but they did some for forensic tests on that manuscript now Yusuf you can't see that there oh well, you can um, you'll see there's a problem and this is where People might go to the Muslim and say, we have evidence that you tampered with the Quran, with the original Quran. Because what they did is they placed uh, forensic lights, special lights, onto that volume, and they found that these black writings that you see, that is what you can see today. But you will see some light, very light scripts below the black. It means it was washed off and the Quran was written again. So that, to say that the Sana manuscript is still the original, maybe I can accept it, I don't have an explanation. My worry is that the Yemen government don't want these Sana manuscripts to be given out to the international media so that they can investigate and see how old these manuscripts are. Now all I want to say is, I'm going to ask you a question. Where's the bones, where's the banana leaves, the stones, Hafsa's copy, Muhammad's copy, all these original uh, Qurans that was in existence. I find it in the Hadith describing all these things. It's gone, it doesn't exist anymore. And I just want to ask, if you say that a holy scripture is from God because of its age and it never changed. I want us all to take our Bibles as well as our Qurans and dump it. We'll go to Egypt because there's stuff that's 2,000, 4,600 years old and it never changed. So we cannot look at this and say, this is evidence that the Bible, the Quran is wrong. We must go and look at the context. There must be a test to see if this is the true word of God or not. And this is why I'm standing here tonight. So I want to show you something else. Maurice Bacall again says, some verses in the Quran correct others. Some verses in the Bible correct others. I don't have a problem with both. Ancient texts all agree except for many minor variations. In the Bible and the Quran, I don't have a problem with that too. Ancient writings is to be blamed for more than one interpretation. I don't have a problem with that too. So I'm going to give you the history of the Quran so you all know that I did this specially for you. In 622 AD, the Quran was written on stone, leather, leaves, and memory of people. I'm not an artist, that's the best I can do. But then in the Battle of Yamama, these uh, memorizers, uh, a lot of them unfortunately died. But there were a few people that still had it in memory. And then all those stones and stuff, leather and all that stuff, that disappeared by time. But what happened is, Umar spoke to Abu, Abu Bakr and he said, we better get all these things together. We better get this Quran written in, get in writing, written form into a manuscript so that if people die, we will still have the Quran. Now what he did is he uh, told Zahid, please do this for us. And he collected all these things and eventually there was few more Qurans. I, I picked up in the Hadith, Aisha, Masood, Abu Talib and Kaab. These guys all had a Quran. But then came Uthman. Uthman said, this copy that you got from Abu Bakr, please give it to me because I want to standardize the Quran. I want to give the whole world the same Quran. 
And what happened is, after he did that, he burned all these other Qurans. Why did he do that? What's also interesting is, eventually, um, this gentleman, Marwan bin Akam, he saw his people are starting to kill each other because there's differences in the Quran all over the world. So he took the one of Hapsa and he burned it. He burned that one. So today you have the Tashkent, the top copy, other Qurans here, a thousand years and uh, six hundred years old, like the gold Quran, and you got the Sana. Let's investigate in that. If you want to go and see if the originals are correct or not, I don't believe that is a test to see if a book is really from God. Because those copies doesn't exist anymore and that's what you've got. I've just made another score chart. I'm not going to go through it. I'm not going to, I made some presentations here because the biggest, uh, um, the biggest, the uh, biggest, uh, contradictions that the Islamic scholar is showing us is that the Bible doesn't describe the, uh, the, uh, the creation well. Now I've written it on that CD, you can go and read through it because I couldn't find a mistake there. Not in the first three days of sunlight being on earth, not in uh, the six day creation, anything like it. If I have time I'll go back to that presentation. But I just want to show you what the scientists say because the Islamic scholar tells you we just get this on. Tells you that the Quran corresponds to science. I'm going to, you know, I've got the copy. I'm going to give you the copy. I want that. You must take it home. In, sorry, I just want to get to the previous one. The, the scientists, you must just remember, the Big Bang and evolution, it's theories. It's not a proven fact. There's no proven facts for the Big Bang as well as for evolution, people. Scientists say that people that believe in a God are mindless idiots. I, I, I took a, uh, uh, I, I, I went through a lot of scientific journals and I wanted to see what the scientists are really saying. And I got this one, I brought it here tonight. Uh, it's on that CD. And please, I'm going to just take a few uh, uh, points out of it so you can see how these guys are lying to you. And you believe them. Okay, this article comes from the New Scientist issue 2559. It is published in the Popular Mechanics. It's, it starts, it says, People are coming more powerful. Maybe it's time we redefine God as something more sophisticated than the creator of the universe. Wow. I don't know what's more sophisticated than that. Anyway, he says, we discovered how to make this new universe and we need this uh, gigantic accelerator to create it for us. He says, we will need to, to, to build this uh, universe. We will need a few things. He said, we will need, uh, the first thing that we will need is uh, monopoles and we will need cosmic strings. Now, I wonder where they're going to get that stuff. Who made it in the first instance? Okay. And then they go and they said Linda modified the inflation theory that was created in 1981 to describe the expanding universe. Now they modify that. So that, uh, you know, all the uh, explanations that you got in your Quran that explains the universe being uh, inflating, it's gone now. It doesn't exist anymore. So a science has changed. Your Quran is still the same. Now what they do is they say, if you take space,